Hello folks, today I'm going to show you a little bit about the Swisher Country Cut 44 inch brush mower. Um, I've used it for a few hours now and feel like I can give some good tips and tricks on this. Uh, I picked it up about a week ago and I've put about five hours worth of work into it or with it so far. Um, one of the main things people want to see is just how much and how thick a stuff it'll cut. So I'm gonna show you real quick here. There's some pretty heavy brush over there. There's some, some saplings that are about two, three inches thick at the base. Um, and all of this stuff over here, I have cleared out with this brush mower. And it looked pretty much just like this over here. Uh, I left, obviously, the bigger trees that I didn't think I could, could push over very easily. Um, but all in all, it's, it's done a fantastic job. Down this alley right here, this was all uh, about seven, eight foot tall grass. So, you know, it clearly just makes hash of grass very easily. And I was actually really surprised that I was able to just drive through some of this thicker brush with these saplings in here and just have no problem whatsoever. I did about two, three miles per hour, nice and slow. Uh, pushing through here and didn't really have any issues whatsoever. Over here you can kind of see a stump of one of the remnants of uh, I think this was a pine tree that I run, ran, ran over. This is probably about the limit of what you want to do as far as you know the the bulk of, of what you want to drive over. This is about two and a half inches across. Probably do a little bit thicker if you were ambitious and super slow. Um, but basically you drive over and it bends the whole tree over until it uh, grabs the thing and then just, you know, it, it really whacks the heck out of it. I could have driven over those two trees fairly easily. Uh, and you can see some of the thicker stuff over here. I just decided to let go. I mean, that's, that's a little bit too thick for, uh, for this particular brush mower. And you know, same with the pine, that's about three and a half inches across over there. Could it have done it? I don't know. I just didn't want to take the risk. Um, I wanted to leave some trees in here anyway. But I mean, this was all covered in thick, thick brush and blackberries and, and all kinds of, of uh, gnarly stuff that was just able to just very smoothly just grind right on over. And it really couldn't ask for anything more as far as the this brush cutter is concerned. Now back here to the mower, I thought I'd offer uh, a few little little tips that uh, uh, you might find useful. Um, depending on where you go, if you're just driving this out of your barn into your backfield or whatever, this, this isn't a big deal. But if you've got to haul this uh, someplace else like I do, you know, out here to, to my recreational property, you've, you've got to, you know, figure out how you're going to haul this thing. And this thing's about, 16 feet long with my ATV connected with the with the bar and the mower itself and that clearly isn't going to fit in my 12 foot trailer. Um, 12 foot is about the minimum you'll need if you have an ATV and uh, the country cut 44 inch and what I have to do when I move it is I actually have to completely disassemble this bar right I have to take this off of the, the this part here which is why I have butterfly nuts uh, to connect the bolts uh, from up top here. It just makes it easier to, to get. What they provide with the package are lock washers and those will just wear out eventually anyway. Now, a key thing to remember is that this thing vibrates like crazy as you're going through. And after an hour or two, you wanna make sure you stop the machine and uh, just tighten up everything because things will get loose. One of these butterfly nuts here yesterday actually got loose on me and ended up you know stripping out a little bit of the threads from vibrating around so now i have to actually replace that bolt um you know the next time i use it after today and same thing over here i have this the controller which uh lights up the the mower itself um you know one of these one of these bolts just vibrated out yesterday and you know this isn't the best setup in the world but it's what they provided where I'm pinching these plates and it just vibrated right out. 
Uh, while I'm here, I have a, a bit of a different perception of what engage and disengage means as far as the blade. So swisher implies that if you have it in the upper position like that, it is engaged. But if you pull it down like this, it's disengaged. And that's actually the opposite of how I think about it. When I pull it down, that's when the blades start whirring. And when you pull it up, that's when the blades are disengaged. So, um, you know, I'm not sure what Swisher was thinking there, but maybe my brain is just backwards as well. One more thing is do yourself a huge favor and keep a bag of extra washers, uh, butterfly nuts, regular nuts, bolts, everything else, because things do vibrate and they do come loose. And as you're putting this thing together out in your field, you will drop a piece in the grass and you won't know where it is and you won't know where to find it. And you won't want to spend a half an hour screwing around to, you know, find some little washer or, or nut or whatever. So just do yourself a favor, go down to the hardware store, grab a handful of, of whatever pieces you're going to need, throw them in a bag, and I have mine tucked away in the, in the front compartment of the ATV there, but you will definitely need those. Um, one other thing is that before you even put it on the trailer for the first time, literally as soon as you get it out of the box and, and put it together, take your wrenches and make sure you go through and tighten everything. I didn't do that. I made a mistake thinking that it was nice and solid from the factory and it isn't and down here along the the guard here there's several of these these bolts here that attach from the back and what has happened if I can get down here is that it has vibrated loose and come loose and I went through and tested all the other ones yesterday after I discovered that they were loose all of them were loose. I had to go in and tighten them up pretty good. So uh, another reason to bring spares and, you know, before you even go out the first time, uh, right out of the box, out of the factory, make sure you go around and tighten everything. Uh, you won't regret it. As far as starting it up and stuff, it's, it's dead simple. You know, they give you a little key, you stick down here, uh, you just fire it up and it just goes and you don't even have to worry about it. Uh, the only thing you have to do coming from the factory really just throw gas in it and then in here you have to get yourself a battery it shows you which one in the uh, instructions but uh, get yourself a battery hook it up uh, it doesn't come with it with the package which is which is fine it costs you about 30 40 bucks for a battery attractor supply um, and then off you go uh, the other thing this is probably just for me only but for those that have shorter gates I have this thing cranked up all the way to the top. You'll need some boards to kind of lower the angle, otherwise the, the back of this will will scrape on your trailer and, and cause problems and you don't want that to happen. And one final tip before I leave you, the first time you're mowing, particularly if you're doing some really thick stuff like this, where you got lots of saplings and trees and whatnot, make sure you crank this up to its highest setting. You know, I think it's about seven or eight inches. You just Turn this thing right here, crank it all the way up, and you want to do this for unloading and loading it off the trailer anyway. But you don't want to lower it down thinking you're going to kill two birds with one stone at, you know, three inches. Uh, it's, it's just going to be a nightmare. So just on your first cut through all this really thick stuff, if that's what you're cutting, make sure that uh, you got that up at its highest setting. Otherwise, you know, I may, after I get done with all this, go back through here with the lower setting and just trim all this up get it a little bit lower um, but I got so much work to do here I'll probably just leave it at the highest setting and and continue to to cut through all of this but anyway hope you enjoyed the video that's it for the tips and tricks and brief review of the Swisher Country Cut 44 inch